In terms of the banks, the reason we're cautious is that we think that the last 30 years have really been the best years for the banks. Essentially, what you've seen over that period is interest rates falling from 18% to zero, which have inflated property values, which have enabled people to take on a lot more debt because they could service a mortgage much better at 2% rates than 18, obviously. Bad debts have fallen from very elevated levels 30 years ago to basically zero today. Uh, all of the cost out story has largely been completed and now the banks are struggling to have flat cost growth, which a lot of their um, investment objectives, or sorry, their financial objectives were targeting. But that's difficult when you employ 30,000 people and minimum wage is going up by 6%, it's hard to have flat costs. So what we think is if you want to play the financials, it's now actually the right time to switch into insurers where you're seeing much stronger top line growth, you're seeing much stronger margin expansion. If you look at a stock like QBE, that's trading on a P of eight and a half, you'll be getting, we think, a 6% dividend yield and that stacks up really well compared to say Commonwealth Bank, which is on 17 times and giving you a much lower dividend yield. Um, so, you know, that's, I guess, a high level on financials. In terms of the miners, uh, I share some of Phil's concerns on the iron ore price long term. I think, you know, in the short term, I can see why iron ore, we think iron ore is going to be strong because China, we think, is about to do some stimulus. Um, we think some of the metals traders in that space tend to be very good at preempting government policy remarkably accurately. And we think that essentially what you're likely to see is this massive increase in demand that's coming from this shift to sustainability in electric vehicles and solar farms and wind farms. The thing that all of these initiatives have in common is that they require a massive amount of commodities, usually copper, lithium, nickel, and it takes years and years to bring on these new mines. So we think you're going to see acute shortages in commodities like copper, which is very difficult to play on the Aussie market. There's only one ASX 100 stock that's a pure copper play, that's Sandfire, but there's better ways to play that overseas. We've got some Canadian copper stocks that we think are really well placed. And they're the two parts of the market that emotionally everyone wants to fall in love with and feels very safe in. And that's the defensives, which I spoke about before, which we think are incredibly crowded and expensive. And it's not a safe investment if everyone's priced it like the stock's perfect. You know, these companies are not perfect. They're, they're just companies and they have their issues and company specific problems from time to time. We've seen that just in reporting season with the healthcare sector. I think the vast majority of healthcare stocks had a downgrade to earnings and a downgrade to outlook. Um, Coles, which operates in you know, very safe industry, supermarkets had a difficult period. Um, share prices come off. So these companies are not bulletproof and they're priced to perfection. They're trading at you know, basically the highest levels they've traded in the last decade. The other part of the market that I'd be pretty wary of is the high PE stocks. And the reason they're so loved, these companies, is because they're selling a sexy story. They've got a high growth business, but the shares are trading at the highest PE that they've traded at in the last 30 years. So if you take a list of all the ASX 300 stocks, you rank them from highest to lowest, you take the 25th percentile, so the median high PE stock, it's trading at the highest PE it's ever traded at in the last 30 years. It's even slightly higher than the dot-com boom. So this part of the market is like, that was a period of absolute insanity, the dot-com boom. We obviously had the dot-com crash shortly after that. We're at the same levels today. So anyone who tells you that, oh, these stocks are fairly priced and they're not so overvalued, just, just you know, go to our presentation. You can see that chart. Um, the data is clear as day.